Hello, welcome back to my channel, Family Tech, where you get all the tech tips, news, and information you didn't even know you needed. Now that you always have a camera in your pocket anytime you need it, you are taking a ton of pictures and you don't know the best way to store them, to make sure they don't get lost, the best way to be able to find those pictures and those moments when you most need them. So today I'm talking about how to store, take, get everything all set with your photos so that you can keep those memories safe and you can keep those memories available to you whenever you want to check them out. As we're talking about photos, there's really three separate sections that I really wanna talk about. First is taking the photos, making sure that they are safe and they are going to be accessible whenever you need them. So storage is a big one. The next one we're gonna talk about is organization. And then the third thing we're gonna talk about is printing them or having them readily available so that you can show them to your friends and look at them whenever you want. Cause that's really what we take photos for is to have those memories and to be able to look back on those memories whenever we want to. So first things first, let's talk about storage. It's 2022. If you are not backing up your photos to a cloud repository at this time, you need to get that happening right away. And this is usually just a toggle switch on your phone. So with an iPhone, if you have um, iCloud, you can set it up to go to iCloud. If you reach a specific limit, you're gonna have to start paying for really any of these options. So you want to figure out where you're going to best get your photos saved in the right repository. There are lots to choose from. Obviously you can do iCloud. That's going to be really automatic if you have an iPhone, but it's going to be more difficult to access those photos or anything if you ever switch to another platform or if you have a PC or things like that. So that's something to be aware of when you're going to go with a really branded solution. So iCloud or Google Photos, that's really where you're gonna get into maybe some trouble. Um, with Google Photos, it's a little more open than iCloud with your Apple account. If you store them in Google Photos, it's going to be tied to your Gmail account. And if you have a Gmail account, you could have an iPhone or anything like that. So it's really not out of the ordinary to store them with Google. Another option is Dropbox. Um, Dropbox is in a cloud repository. You can store all sorts of files and folders and everything like that. I personally use Dropbox for my cloud repository. I also upload everything to Google Photos. I like to double up just in case. Um, but really all of my organization and everything takes place in Dropbox. What I like about Google Photos though is it's going to help you organize them in a really automatic way. But with Dropbox, you're going to have to organize them manually for a lot of these situations. Um, but with Google Photos, it might organize it into specific um, times of the year or specific people that are in the photos. So there's a lot of kind of analysis that goes into the photos when you store them in something like Google Photos. So you have Dropbox, you have Google Photos, you have iCloud, you also have OneDrive. This is a Microsoft um, product. So if you have Microsoft already, like you're already paying for Office with Microsoft Word and Outlook and Excel, then you might already be paying for storage on OneDrive. So you don't wanna du double up the paying for storage if you're gonna be already paying for it and not using it on OneDrive. And all of these solutions have an app that you put on your phone and that you toggle. So you have to make sure to go into that app after you've installed it on your phone and go into the settings and toggle it so that it automatically uploads any photos that you take directly to that cloud repository. That way you don't even have to think about it. You just hit that toggle button and it will automatically send any photos that you take to that cloud repository. So this is automatic saving of your files. You don't have to do anything, but make sure that toggle is turned on. So that's kind of where you want to save it. Um, I have a whole video about backups and all of that. So you might wanna check that out where I talk about, you should have three copies of any 
file that you want to keep. The original, a backup, and then a backup of the backup. So that's just kind of basic backup strategy. Um, again, that video goes into way more detail on how to make sure all of that is safe. But this we're just talking about if you're just uploading your files to one cloud repository, um, just make sure that toggle is turned on on your phone and those photos will automatically get sent. So now if they all get sent automatically, usually they get sent to a folder called um, for Dropbox, it's called camera uploads. It's something similar on most platforms. Um, so it's just talking about all the uploads that are coming directly from your camera. Now, when you have this enabled, that folder can get awfully big. So what I like to do, so now we're kind of segueing into the organization of these photos. What I like to do in January is take all of the photos that are in camera uploads from, from the last year and create a folder so I have a folder called photos and under that folder that's called photos is every year. So 2018, 2017, 2016. And so I'll take everything that's in that camera uploads and I'll put it in the folder for the previous year. So this coming January, I will take everything from 2022, put it in a 2022 folder, and then it's all right there. And usually in January, I'll go through that camera uploads and I'll delete screenshots or just anything that's not needed. But I do that in January so that I don't get this backup of, oh my gosh, I have to go through 10 years, which you might have to do when you initially set all this up. But you have to go back through 10 years of organizing all of these photos into different years. When you're just starting out, most photos are date stamped. So you can just organize all of the photos in your folder by date, and then you can create these different years and drag all of the photos from that year to the appropriate year. And that makes it really easy to just kind of separate it out. Then you can go through the folders one by one, you know, take a Sunday one day and go through a folder every week or every month and go through all of those photos and just make sure everything that's in there is something you want to actually keep and save forever and ever. So that's how I organize. Then I have scanned in because we didn't have cameras in our pockets when I was in high school or when I was a child. So I have a lot of physical photos that I scanned in. So I used a Fujitsu scan snap. It made it really simple. It just kind of scanned through all of the photos very quickly. And then I can organize it from there into the appropriate years. So since we didn't take as many photos as we do now, I separated it out into kind of age groups. So elementary Entry school, um, old, um, you know, my maiden name is Whirl, so old Whirl family. So if it's just like family vacations or things like that, um, and then junior high, high school, college. And that's kind of how I separated out all of those photos. So now what's really fun is I'm talking to a friend. Oh, you know what? Actually, this just happened. I was talking to my daughter. She just got her wisdom teeth pulled. And I said, oh man, I went to Disneyland. I lived in Southern California at the time. I had an annual pass. So I went to Disneyland the day after I took my wisdom. I, I got my wisdom teeth pulled. And so I pulled up the photo of me at Disneyland, all kind of chipmunk cheeked and everything. Um, and I'm like, see, you're gonna be just fine. I was at Disneyland the day after. I was a little bit on drugs, but I was at Disneyland the day after getting my wisdom teeth pulled. But I was able to find that photo very easily because I remembered what time of my life it is. I can go to the appropriate folder and then I can go from there. So it's very easy to pull up photos, especially from your past. If you know what age you were or what year that happened, that's really an easy way to organize your photos. Some people go even further and organize those folders into months, January, February, March. I don't go quite that far. I don't take as many pictures as maybe some people, so I don't see the need. I have, you know, a few hundred photos to go through that I really want to keep every year. Uh, and so it's not a big deal to not have those months separated out, but that is completely up to you. So now that you have your photos all organized in Dropbox or in iCloud or in Google Photos, what do you do from here? You want to occasionally see these pictures, right? So some things that you can do is create a 
book that you print out. Um, if you go to shutterfly.com, there's a ton of different solutions online that you can find um, and they will print out your photos in a book. And so all of these kind of scrapbooking applications and sometimes they even just have a template. You just plug in all the photos, you look at the template and you hit print and you pay for it and you're good to go. They send you the book and it's done. So my sister will print out a, diff a book for the year every single year. So in January or December, she creates the book for the previous year and then she gets it sent to her and she has all of these books that have photos for the year in a really easy to view location. So if somebody comes over, oh yeah, let's pull out the book from 2001 and they can go through those photos and it's really fun. So I love those ways to really easily create a book that you can look through. Another solution is something called Chatbooks. And what Chatbooks does is it kind of automatically takes the photos that you are already posting to social media and sends you a book when you hit a specific amount. So you set all of these things. So you can say, anytime I use this hashtag on my account, send that to chat books. And then when I hit 30, send me my book. And so you've set all of those settings up before and then when you hit those limits, you get automatically sent a book. You don't have to do anything. It just comes to your house. Um, so that's another really easy way to preserve those memories. Um, and then you can also just print them. Um, I know a lot of Costco's are no longer printing photos, but you can have it sent to Walgreens or anything like that. Um, any photos that you want and have them print out the physical copies of the photo. And then you can frame them or do whatever you want with them. I mean, so I remember the days of one hour photo when you had a roll of film and you had to take it to the place and then you had to wait for them to develop the film and then like okay let's see all these po photos that I've taken of this like wonderful event that I want to remember forever and all the photos are blurry or they're terrible um, Today is so much better because we can see all those photos. We know exactly what they look like. So we don't have to waste money on printing photos that are terrible. So it's really easy to just send a whole stack of photos to something like Walgreens and they can just print those photos and you have all the photos that you actually want instead of the photos that we used to get when we were kids. So those are my tips for photo storage, organization, and printing. I hope you got some use out of it. If you did, please make sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know I do go live every Friday at 12 Pacific. Um, I do kind of a podcast interview with different people talking about different things that have to do with family and technology. So definitely hit that notification bell and make sure you are subscribed on YouTube and go ahead and follow me everywhere else on social media. I'm at Family Tech Everywhere. So um, I do answer questions on Instagram a lot. So if you have a specific question, you can try and leave it in the comments. Sometimes my comments get um, a little cluttered so I don't see all of them. So if you instant message me on Instagram, I am sure to see that and I usually respond over there. So we will see you next week. Thank you.